Eric Crawford here with Ultra Pure Systems. Have you ever wondered what flow meters inside or outside reverse osmosis systems mean and what they do? Well, let me show you. This is an 800 gallon per day system that's being currently wet tested in the shop. It's running very well. We're at about 25 parts per million on the reverse osmosis membrane. Um, we do not test our DI during uh, wet testing to keep the resin as moist as we can and not uh, send it dry. So that's reading zero currently. Let me go inside the cabin. I'll show you how these flow gauges work. Flow meters. On the left hand side, you have the permeate, the reverse osmosis gallons per minute that's going through the RO membrane and that's post membrane after the RO has been made. On the right hand side, we have the concentrate. Concentrate is the amount of water that we have to get rid of with the minerals being calcium, magnesium, iron, chlorine, the list goes on and on. We have a really nice cut sheet that describes everything that an RO membrane removes if you're interested. Currently, we are making right at about 0.5 GPM, and that's right on top of that stainless steel uh, needle. Next to it is your concentrate, and we're running 1.1. So what this tells you is that we are running a little more, little more than two to one ratio reverse osmosis versus concentrate. What's interesting is when we dial these systems in during wet testing, every single unit we make, we maximize the amount of water that we can make versus the water that is going down the drain. And we do this with what's referred to as a concentration needle valve. They're on the bottom left-hand corner, as you can see in this picture. And by moving it, what happens is we can decide, do we want the water to go through the membrane more, or do we want more to go down the drain? There's a balance here, and I'll show you what I mean. When we close this concentration valve, you can see what's starting to happen with the gauges, is that we're gonna start making more water, and we're gonna be dumping less water, but look what's happening to the pump pressure. Pump pressure goes up, the head pressure goes up because we're not allowing the water to go down the drain and we're pushing it through the RO membrane, very tight sleeves, which increases pump pressure. So we need to take that in consideration when we're dialing systems in is that we want to make sure that we're within 100 to 125 on the, on the motor pump uh, pressure and we want to maximize the RO permeate with the least amount of pressure on the pump. So we should be very close right back to 100. You know, RO membranes, even residential, work off the exact same principle. If uh, you went under your sink and you had a reverse osmosis system, there's gonna be a restrictor. Most times it's a very white, small, round, um, plastic device and that restricts the water going down the drain. Those are specified with the RO membranes depending what RO membrane you have, what size gallon per day membrane, is going to change the milliliters of water that you go dump down the drain. But very few people realize that during RO water being made, we do have a percentage of water that goes down the drain to get that clean, very good tasting water that we drink and in our case, very clean water that we put through processes in many different uses throughout the US. Hopefully this helps, take care.